Hey there, this video is going to be all about my seed starting setup and how I use this tool to plant over 10,000 seeds per hour and how I start them in my basement under grow lights and then I finish growing them in that hoop house back there which is my nursery before I plant them out into my garden. So whether you're a beginning seed starter or an expert looking to up your game, this video is for you. Let's go start some seeds inside, check it out. These are the paper chains for the paper pot transplanter system for cells. So they're like honeycombs, but they come in different spacings. So these ones, it's like in centimeters because they're Japanese. These ones are 15 centimeters, so it's about six inches apart. So six inch spacing is what I'm gonna go with on my lettuce. These ones are four inch, 10 centimeters. And that's what I'm gonna plant the ball bunions in today too. And then there's a two inch one, but I only use that for like green onions. So I keep everything on the shelf right there. So it's nice and convenient to get, clean up, put it back. You know, I don't have to go look for anything ever. And then once I got that set up, I just kind of stage everything so it's convenient. So this kind of sits right there. I've got uh, this thing sitting right to my right. I have my paper chains sitting right here. All my trays right under where I'm standing here. Yeah, when you order the paper pot kit, um, it comes from paperpot.co. It comes with this. These are the spreaders for the paper pot chains so they stick right in here uh just kind of like chopsticks do and then it comes out the other end and then it spreads open like this and then right on the spreader frame like so and then this just flips over in here and that's it. So I've got this and I'd like fill it with potting soil. And I think they sell this stuff like in several states around here anyways. You can see it's like really fine. There's not like bark or anything like that in it. It's compost, there's sand. So for the past year, I've been using Dirtcraft Organics potting soils and they're out of North Carolina, but I was driving there. It's like three or four hour drive there. They're like $300 for a one yard sling. And then you can get it shipped, but then it's another $300. So then that makes it like six, $700. It was good quality, but it's like, eh, I don't know if it's that good. So I sought out something closer and this I bought like just around the corner from my house and it was $179 or $180 for a one yard sling. So I'm just gonna add some perlite to it to uh, add some aeration for water penetration so I don't get root rot. There's this like, I don't know, they call themselves a greenhouse supply store around here. It's called Knoxville Seed. They don't really sell greenhouse supplies though. But yeah, I got this huge bag of perlite there for $16. I was like, yeah, whatever. I mean, this bag of perlite costs $8 at Home Depot, <laughs> you know? So there's really no like recipe that I'm going by here. I'm just adding a few scoops of perlite. <laughs> If I had multiples of these, you know, I could set my station up a little bit differently so that I could fill multiple trays at once and it would go a lot faster, but uh, I don't really like, I mean, I do do a lot, but they come in like a pack of two, so you could buy two more of these and it's like a hundred dollars. And then this is the dibbler. So then this has 264 dibbles that line up perfectly with your 264 holes so that you don't have to poke a hole with your finger for the seeds. And then this, this is the quick click seed dropper. The holes line up, you see? And then it drops the seeds right in this. And they make these, all of these types of trays too. Um, you can buy them for all different sizes. And I order it from paperpot.co or there's different plates that you can get for the different seed sizes. And these like tighten it, the space between the two plates and it, you tighten them together. 
but then there's a gap here too. With onion seeds, because they're so small, this has to be adjusted really tight, or I find that the onion seed can like get stuck under here. Be cautious of that if you get one of these and you're working with really small seeds. It works great for big seed, but not as great for small seed. It just takes a little bit more experience with small seed. And then I just dump my seeds right on here. And see how the pelleted seeds work like real nice. I don't know if y'all can actually see, but it just gets one seed in each hole. And then you gotta make sure that they're all lined up good. Make sure every seed actually went in the dibble. Sometimes it's a little bit off and they don't actually all fall in there. And then I just put a little soil right back on top, usually just like with my hand, a few handfuls. And like that, and then I just kind of press the top down. And then I pull this out. So I leave this in until it's all done because the soil will hold it open. But um, if you take it out too early, it just kind of goes like that just a little bit. And then the seeds won't drop properly in each hole. So you want to leave it in while you drop the seeds and then remove it after. And then I always keep these little labels right there. They're just, you know, like popsicle sticks. And I always keep a marker right here with the cap tied to my light switch. And so I never have to run around and look for my marker. So I just label it salad and everybody knows what it is. And then I put the date on the back. Today's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Okay. And then I go water it in and then I do my next one. Bring these in here from the other room. Can I just fill this up with water? So there's lots of ways you can water trays. This is just what works for me. It's not a perfect setup, but I mean, it's what I have to work with. I stack these, they germinate better. And then this is just like my germination area. It's a heating pad. So this is a dehumidifier because I'm in the basement of my house. The humidity gets really high down here. So I like to be able to control the humidity, which can help not get like that green slimy stuff on top of your seedlings. And, and then it also helps keep it like a consistent temperature. That's why I do all this in, in the basement of my house, because the temperature down here just kind of stays around like 60 to 70 degrees. So seeds are going to benefit from consistent temperature for germination, but they don't actually need light to germinate. So I leave everything over here until it germinates. So once they germinate over there and I'll put them under my lights. Now, the reason that I don't just stick them right under the lights so or the lights on to germinate is because grow lights are gonna dry them out, dry out your soil really fast. So you risk getting like really poor germination if you just put them under here and put the grow lights on because that grow light's just gonna dry out that top layer of soil where you just put the seeds and it's not gonna stay moist and you're gonna probably try to over water to make up for it, right? You're gonna be like, oh, they're dry and you're gonna soak it. So you want it to get wet and then you want it to dry out before you water it again, but you don't want them to get over dry. It has to stay moist, right? On the flip side of that, you also want to have good airflow. So I've got a fan right here, just kind of blows that way. There's another fan down here. So they will make room for new seedlings and then we'll move those out to the nursery and it's just a big cycle. And this is the system. And this is the system I use even in the summer. It's not only because it's cold out, because in the summertime, it's the same thing. It's just too hot out there. You can't germinate seeds and the temperatures fluctuate. And then, so these are the onions that I planted 10 days ago. So this is what 10 days of growth looks like. And then if we move down a shelf here, this is the lettuce. 
that we planted. This is about 10 days of growth under the grow lights. And then these are gonna go out to the nursery right now. And then I'll show you the next steps with that. And then these are the pepper plants and you can see I've still got them on the heat mat. And these are gonna stay in here until summer basically they'll get potted up and moved into the grow tent eventually here with tomatoes that we're going to graft so these are not going to get moved out to the nursery anytime soon it's probably going to be a couple two to three months before we move these out we're just going to grow them under grow lights until summer and then other trays of lettuce that we planted a couple weeks ago and then a couple more trays of onions down there i've showed you all the systems in the basement it's like kind of efficient. The not efficient part is now getting these out to the greenhouse, right? But it's really only like maybe 20 steps away. And I've got my cart parked right out the back door. So yeah, we just move them out there. Might just do them one by one. I don't have a better system for it. Never seen tools makes like a carry tray for these things. So you can carry like three of them at once in each hand. So I might be investing in, in that tool soon. I'm just broke because I haven't made any money since Christmas time, basically, because it's been the middle of winter. <laughs> So just so you can see the efficiency, the basement door is right there. I'm just banging left into my basement and then I come out here, I load my cart up. You know, the garden's all right there. So the nursery that we're going into is right there. Just kind of load my cart up with my seed trays. And then this is my nursery. So you can see it's just a few steps from my basement. Then I bring everything out here, eight by four pallets. So it's a fair amount of space. And then the goal with this whole tunnel is that the whole thing's gonna be turned into nursery space this this summer i just have like a regular hose it's just like a retractable hose though so it's convenient to clean up i never have to um you know try to wind it up or anything like that and then just like a uh, nice shower nozzle and that's how i water stuff here um, I do just want to take a second to talk about like the downside of the system because it's not perfect. Uh, this system, right? Like meaning the paper pot transplanter system that I just showed you. So if you're using like 72 cell seed trays or 128s and things like that, you can still use the quick click seed dropper. And this isn't going to be as much of a concern for you, but you can see how I've got these really nice lettuce seedlings. Uh, they're six packs and I'll sell these for $3 at the farmer's market. So at least I'll get some money. But the reason I have these is because I got poor germination on a couple of those trays. So if I'm not getting like 100% germination or close to it, I'll show you the trays a little bit closer. Uh, I'd say I've got 95% germination. It looks like maybe there's five or six cells on one of the trays that didn't get germinated. And that's normal. Um, I don't care who you are. Some people make germination chambers to help. Um, and, and, you know, keeping it in the basement helps too. If it was out here, those seedlings would barely even be germinated by now. And uh, they'd be a lot more spotty. But my point is that in the paper pot system, like you can't just pop out a couple cells and go plant them. If you got empty ones on your 72 cells, it's not a big deal, right? You just pull the ones out and they're not empty. But the paper pot system, you'll be missing plants when you plant it. Uh, so it could be a real pain in the butt and then it makes the whole system not very efficient. So that's why all of the systems I just showed you are very important to me because I have to have at least 95% germination on those lettuce trays or the profitability just starts to go way, way down. Because it's not that I can't fix it, I can fix it, but you have to fix it. So that takes time. Well, I don't have time to be spending on that. That's just time that I'm not making more money. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just want to talk about that because it's not a perfect system. So next on the list is we're gonna start tomatoes and I'm gonna be grafting tomatoes so we'll start two different types of tomato plants and then I'm gonna use the roots from one and then I'm gonna cut the tops off the other ones and then I'm gonna glue them together and that's gonna give me the one that I have the roots the roots are gonna be disease resistant so I won't get any blight so I'm gonna show you that whole entire process so I hope you'll come back thanks y'all <laughs> 